Hello everyone, welcome to the Four Lads at a Dream podcast. My name is Stephen Clifford and this is episode two of the Alex McLeish story. Joining us is our um, regular co-host, Mr Chris Jack. Chris, how are you? Hi Stephen, all good, thanks to be on. And um, obviously joining us is um, former Rangers manager, Mr Alex McLeish, how are you? I'm here guys, it's good to be with you. Alex is obviously joining us for the second time. Um, episode one, we covered his first couple of years at Rangers where we had um, a double and a historic treble, um, the 50th title. But what we want to talk about is the 2004-2005 season. And also delighted to say joining us, a very special guest is midfielder from that season, uh, Mr Alex Ray. Alex, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, guys. Looking forward to a bit of chit-chat about the, the good old days. <laughs> yes. Um, season 2005, uh, 2004-2005 certainly was a fantastic season for all Rangers fans. Alex, um, having had the disappointment of the season before, um, we strengthened with some top-class signings, John Allen, Boomsong, Dado Purcell, Nacho Novo, Marvin Andrews, and indeed Alex Ray. What was your thinking behind these signings? Now, do you, do you remember um, in the last pod I said about lack of preparation the season before? We, we did signings and uh, with three weeks to go and it was all like um, players towards the end of their career and, um, they, you know, not really featuring at, at their highest level anymore. But these, these ones that we signed um, for, for that season, 2004-2005, Alec Ray, I went to see Alec, uh, and I know he's he's our guest as well. Uh, I went to see Alec at Wolverhampton, and he's a free transfer. And I phoned David Murray. I couldn't wait to to phone David Murray and say, to him, "Look, no brainer. You've got to sign this guy right now. He's still got legs. He's still got the the ability, and he'll be a fantastic signing for Rangers." And they, and it, and he's costing you nothing, David. You know, apart from wages, and um, that was music to the big man's ears. And in, in that particular uh, era and time of our uh, kind of watching the pennies a wee bit. Alex, Boom, was, was it to sign for Rangers, and was it a difficult decision? No, <clears throat> not at all. Um, it's interesting because when news were kind of doing that opening gambit, because it's always interesting you kind of get an insight to what the gaffer and the, the planning was prior to that. And, and, and I think he's absolutely right, I, I, excluding myself. I think, um, you know, because I was, I was in the twilight, I was at the end of my career. Um, but when you actually look at the actual signings and the level and the quality of the signings, I think that was what was really important because they brought real quality to the team, power, strength and technical ability as well. But going back to your original point, I, uh, um, in the January, about five or six weeks prior to getting an interest by Rangers, soon as uh, tried to tap me up to go and sign for Blackburn, having got rid of me 17 years earlier. And uh, I thought it was an opportunity to get back up the road and so forth. But when I heard about Rangers was in the mix, it was a no-brainer. Um, my little daughter, who was, I don't know, about two and a half at the time, three, uh, she was uh, starting to sound like, you know, one of the kids from the black country with a Birmingham accent. I thought I'd need to get back up the road as well. <laughs> so it was imp- it was it was important to uh, to kind of come back. And everybody knows my connection with the club. So it was an it was a no brainer. But but my, my initial kind of conversations with Alex were really important as well. Uh, when he was saying about it was important to try and get people with Rangers minded people about the dressing room, people who understood the club. And I've often said this when when I went back to Rangers. The gaffer and his coaching staff had compiled a, it was like a little, I don't know, eight inch, ten inch binder, leather binder, had two or three DVDs. And within that day DVDs, it was actually footage uh, of the history of the club. And, and, and by giving guys like Prusso uh, and Boomsong, these types of things. We also signed a boy called Mildenovic at that time as well. It was just an, a, a, a period where we could actually give uh, these guys... Uh, a, a kind of fast track of what the club meant, but they were brilliant signings, and for me it was just a, it was just like coming back home because I'd, I'd been released as a kid, so it was a, a, there was no decision to be made at all. I just said to the missus, "We're moving, we're going back up the road," and it's the best thing I ever did. Alex, just to ask you a wee bit on that. Um, you made a point of um, sorry, Alex McLeish. We should say maybe we should just call you Gaffer in this one, Alex McLeish, just to <laughs> save us getting messed up. So I'm going to ask the Gaffer here. 
you said something about your preparation. I remember back in 2003-2004 season, I think it was early March maybe, um, we were beaten by Dunfermline away 2-0. It was a horrendous game. Paolo Vinoli scored an atrocious own goal. And we were all on the way back up the road. And you announced after that game that John Allen Boomsong was coming on a Bosman signing. Was that, did that just give you such a, a massive kind of preparation and, and you were more equipped then and, and ready for the start of the season going in? Because, as you, as you said before, and maybe repeat myself slightly and repeating your question really, but um, is, was that vital and a catalyst to the season going forward? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I, I put Alec first there because he's on the show. And I'd gone to see him, and, and as I said, in a game at Wolverhampton, and he, he cruised it, you know. He's playing at a good level at that time. And I knew, you know, obviously he's, he, he was getting older, but he was he was still the guy who could hit Hacker, and certainly for Rangers. Now, John Allen Boomsong, we spoke about the preparation of the, getting Boomsong, getting big uh, pre-show. And I'd gone to... to Monaco to see Dado against Real Madrid and uh, he battered the, the Real Madrid defence to pieces, you know, and to think that this guy had actually said, <laughs> I want to come to Rangers, I could not believe the atmosphere when I played, when he played for Monaco, Ibrox, um, you, you know, one night and he said it was just uh, like out of this world and, you know, to think I had them. It was it was like back to Hibs Day, and I got a player for for free from uh, one of the, the Danish teams, and I, I phoned uh, the Hibs chairman at the time and said, uh, "This is a no-brainer. I'm getting him for nothing." And he fitted into the team uh, really well. Not not a dad though, but um, he was a defender at, at the time, Ulrich Clarsen. And, and I was so chuffed to get this guy in advance, but to get Dado, to get uh, Boomsong in advance, to get Ali in advance, that that was manna from heaven, absolute manna from heaven. And and that, that gave us a wee boost, as you said, from that dismal Dunfermline performance and game. And to, to, to know that we were getting these guys in advance, we were playing at a great level, then that gave me brilliant optimism for the coming season. That optimism perhaps didn't really translate into uh, results, unfortunately. In the first couple of weeks of the season, you draw, draw 0 0 up at Aberdeen in the first league game. There's the uh, Champions League games against Moscow. And then the, was it towards the end of August, there's the old firm defeat at Parkhead as well. How, how tricky was that Was that start to the season? Yeah, it was. Um, and, and when you think of the Moscow game, it, you know, they, they'd, I uh, think, bought a couple of Brazilian, or yeah. definitely one Brazilian for. Like a living, a ridiculous figure at that particular time, and and we wasn't it? Wasn't it? Sorry, I was just say it was Wagner Love. Wagner Love, it was. Wagner yeah. Love, aye, Wagner Love, yeah. Um, who had made the headlines a few times since then, and um, round about that time. But what, what a good player! And they also had other, a lot of other players in the team, and people again naive, a bit naive, saying that we should be. Um, Going to Moscow and winning, and uh, you know, we in the end we narrowly lost, but it made for bad, bad uh, headlines and stuff. You know, I think I was, um, uh, I think my head was on a Moscow mule or something like that. You know, absolutely outrageously ridiculous, disrespectful. But you just got to take it in the chin, get on with it, um, just keep telling the lads, and encouraging the lads, and training the right way. Andy Watson. Um, Ian, Ian McGuinness, my doctor, a brilliant guys, brilliant staff, Jan Vouters, you know, I can't speak highly enough for these guys back in the day. And um, the, we, we ploughed away, we, we, we started to see the light a wee bit and, um, you know, you know what all happened at the end of the season, but certainly we, the early days were, were quite tough and it, here we go again, you know, and and you know the expectations of the fans, um, as, as I've said about ten times already on the blog. Alex Ray, there was there was quite a in in that run there was quite a a kind of turning point. Rangers went up to Aberdeen in the League Cup um, during the week. Uh, Fernando Rickson and a late Stephen Thompson goal, and Rangers went two 0 and that was a catalyst to kind of kick us on because there was a wee bit of of stories in the press, and the press were saying that if we didn't win this game. 
then Alex was 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 done for more or less. Mm -hmm. How big a turning point was that in that year, and what sort of belief did that give you? Well, I, I was actually I, I got injured in the in the Celtic game at Parkhead. However, I think what you're what you're actually touched on is really important because with all the kind of razzmatazz, you know, some of the headlines about the gaffer, uh, the players, you know, everyone's questioned at that point. And I think that's a key thing. And I think it's an important factor as well, Stephen, when, when you're, you, you're being questioned as a group, and that, because there's two ways you can go. You can actually collapse and sink, and then you can either dig in and, and, and kind of try and, get, as you rightly said, so when you go up to Aberdeen, when you go up to Aberdeen and you get the results you're looking for, I think it was uh, Fernando got a goal, uh, up there, didn't he? And I think it was, if my memory serves me right, it was Big Tomo. So it was, a, it was an important uh, time for us to get that belief taken because that's a tough, tricky place at that time. Uh, as you said, we'd, we'd kind of drawn with him uh, the opening game of the season. So to go up there and get that result, um, and, and you have to factor in as well. And I think this is what people forget, but you don't actually get this time. When you actually go to Rangers, you're expected to hit the ground running because their expectations are to win, win, win. And when you rightly said there, when you lose to Moscow, you lose to Celtic, you draw to Hearts, all of a sudden, you, uh, you're on the back foot right away. Uh, and it takes character to dig in. But that, that was uh, one of the, the key wins. Because from that, uh, I think we then kick on, don't we? We went on an unbelievable run. Um, uh, and then again, that just generates confidence. And, and, and I think the gaff will remember this. Boom song. Uh, and, and Big Dado in particular, Big Dado in particular, he really, really bought into what Rangers were. I mean, really, you know, he was pumping the chest. and He, he was an unbelievable player to have about the place because if you talk about guys with winning instincts, uh, he very much had that. That does <laughs> kick us on. You're right. Um, and I'll ask, I'll ask both of you here, um, two massive wins in November. We have Celtic at home in the Cup. We go behind in that game, but come back. Um, Big Daddle scores, Shorter gets a winner. And then we take them at home in the league. Um, Nacho gets a penalty and Daddle gets a header. And the league obviously was more comfortable, but the cup game was massive. It was the first time I think the crowd bought into this team in terms of, right, well, we, we can get behind them and they can do it. What's the question to both of you here? Um, the two wins in November, what's your memories of them? Go on, Gaffer. Yeah, um, you know, I do remember the 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 Celtic one in terms of the the Ibrox game, and I, I really felt that that game was when we I think we went into that game not not only feeling we could win, but knowing we we would win it. I, I just felt that the confidence was back within the squad, and there was a spring in the step, and and uh, when we won that game. You know, I, I said there's big things ahead of us this season. We, we have certainly got the potential to do it now. And we've now proved it with this performance and result. And what an injection of confidence that game gave to us. Yeah. Uh, Gaffer, see, see um, if my memory serves me right, um, when we went back to the end of August and uh, I, I tore my calf in the first couple of minutes and, and I, I hadn't, I hadn't uh, played a game leading up to this game. But I was trying my best with wee Hendo and um, Stuart, the physio, and, and the guys about the place were trying uh, to get us up. Yeah, Stuart, Pauly, yeah. Pauly, Pauly, Stuart and, 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 my, and, and I remember saying to myself, that was my target, to try and get back for the games. I think it was about 10 or 11 weeks, just to try and be in the frame. And then you threw in to me saying, you're, you're actually starting the night. And I remember the game vividly because one of the early conversations I had with Alex um, I, I don't think we had well, the gaffer. We 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 um we didn't beat Celtic once a year before gaffer. I remember right. you saying uh, the, the importance of getting a win. Uh, we obviously went to Parkhead in that August game and lost to I think it was about an eighty odd minute uh, shot for for Alan Thompson. Right. And and then you and I remember thinking to myself this. This will define your season tonight, and um, mm -hmm. because of it, you're right, we were into the game and a lot of confidence. But for me, if we had lost that, I think the setback would have been massive because yeah. that would have been the second. They would have been more or less guaranteed to win the first bit of silverware as well. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, it was just about that bit of belief. And I, it's interesting because I was listening to Ian Ferguson talking over the last couple of days through the media about a particular game that led them on to nine in a row, and it was when he was fighting with De Canio and they won at Parkhead. He says that was the one that actually got us. It wasn't the one that actually was definitive, but for me, this was the one that actually kicked us on. 
Bye, because, bye. again, you gaff up without a shadow of a doubt, because I think yeah. up until up until about the late, latter stages, we were dominating the game, we were dominating territory, wave after wave. Um, and I remember saying to myself, if we don't win this tonight, I remember in the game, because we'd so much yet, having yeah. dominated and still lost at home, it would have been a body blow. And then Big Daddy... No, I, I agree, agree with you there, Ali. I think, uh, um, absolutely, in terms of what the Cup game did for us, just, you know, the I, Cup game gave us that confidence of the next game, knowing we were going to win. But um, Arvaladze's winner uh, was, was obviously, I think, the turning point. You're... you're Great about that, yeah. And if my memory goes back now and I start to search, you're a bit younger than me in terms of memory wise. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if it's any better, Biggie. <laughs> but, no. then, um, but, do, do, but do you know the interesting thing about it? And this is kind of gaffer, everybody kind of celebrates. Do, do you know? Um, I, I'd invite, I, I think, and in, invited up Jeff Winter, who, who, um, he was one of the because I remember, oh, the, the referee. I, oh, I, I'm sure I invited Jeff Winter up to that game because when I um I was I was told in no uncertain terms, don't tell anybody you've signed a pre-contract for Rangers. And I think one of my last games for for um for Wolves was against Newcastle. And I'm running up the road and there was a lot of rumours roaming about. And Jeff's a big Rangers fan, and he says to me, "There's a lot of rumours now." I says, "Let's put it this way." One of the first uh, old firm games at Ibrox, you're up there as my guest. And he just burst out <laughs> laughing. So, so, so I, invited, I invited Jeff up for that game. And I'm sure we wound up in Mr. Sings. Uh, until, as you, you do, know, as you do. Well, absolutely, yeah. We ended up, we ended up having a, a, an Indian. And, and, and I remember directly after it, because I hadn't played for, for 10 or 11 weeks, I had a big blister, Gaffer, in the back of my heel, because I, the, these boots were still brand new. And uh, the doc, I says to him, I says, Doc, you'll need to bust. You'll need to bust. It's, it's, it was throbbing. Who's that, and Doc McGuinness? It's a big Doc McGuinness. He says to me, and I said, and he said to me, he says, Alex, if I bust this, you won't make the game against Celtic the next time. And I says, well, what's the options? And he put this solution and in, he injected it into the blister gaffer. And I remember, oh, yeah. kinda, I, I kind of clenched my fist as if I was going to hook the doc <laughs> because the pain. <laughs> I went, yeah, big, you know, that. so anyway, but um, it managed to keep me fit enough for the next uh, Old Firm game. Uh, yeah. It was about 10 days, 7 days afterwards, wasn't it? Yeah. The momentum from those two Old Firm games continues. You get to January, now you're in, in good shape, and then you get into the, the January transfer window, Alec, and you, you bring in uh, Buffel, bring in Kiriakos, bring in uh, Ronald Votaris, and bring in Barry Ferguson. In terms of incomings, that's a really positive and, and successful window. You also lose a uh, big boom song. Uh, he goes uh, down the road. Did you? You also came out that window overall <laughs> stronger than you went into it. Did you really get the feeling at that time that no, this was going to be a this could really be a successful season for you? Yeah, I felt. Um, I felt with those, with those um, acquisitions, uh, you, you know that none of them are mugs at all. You know, obviously, big Kiriakos was was interesting to see if he would settle in right away and and. To be honest, he hit the ground running, as Alec mentioned that term earlier, and he did hit the ground running. You know, he, he came in, he had a great attitude, he, he, he was a, a bit of a fearless big geezer, and, and we got Fer, and she said Fergie back. Um, Boom Song went, it was you know, an incredible deal. We think we got him for nothing and sold him for seven million. Um, and that day it was you know, a hell of a money nowadays, you know, that would be for a, a dumpling. Seven million. Is that right, Alec? You know the. Yeah. <laughs> G- Gaffer, just out of curiosity, because everyone obviously knew uh, what Fergie would bring to the table. How did how did Kiriakos come about? Because when you look what he actually did with us, what he went on to achieve, how did he come about? Uh, you know what, Alec? I just can't remember the the the, the um, kind of Kiriakos link. I'm sure an, an agent had called called us and. Um, I'd gone to David and, and and we knew that Boom Song was leaving, then we obviously had to fill that kind of gap. Right. Uh, so I just cannot, for the life of me, remember who the agent was or who the contact was, whether it was David or whether it was somebody through myself. Um, in their days, obviously, the days of agents nowadays, they just go direct to the, the, the club or the the chief execs and things now, but in, in that day it was either the manager or the, the chairman. David had had done a lot of the, 
the deals in the past and um, it might have been somebody through him but I just can't remember Kyriakos but I, I had a great affiliation We're right away we had to off um, and, and I, ju I just liked the, the absolute uh, commitment to the big fella you know he Aye. he wasn't pretty but and, and um, but he, he could defend he, he could run he, he could head of the ball I think a lot of players really struggled coming into the Scottish game and couldn't deal with the physical side of things you know even Basil Bolly when he came the Rangers struggled badly and I was speaking to Frank Sozzi about this a couple of weeks ago and, and it was incredible to see the European Cup win guy who scored the winning goal struggle so much at Ibrox but anyway, the, um, getting all those players in in January, I, I felt gave us a hell of a surge, you know, to go and do what we did at the end of the season. Gaffer, I'm just looking up uh, Kyriakos, you know, where he came from. He was actually Panathinaikos, I didn't, because I didn't realise he, he uh, came from there. It's, it's amazing because he was brilliant, and see, have him booted this room. He's a big Cameron influence as well. Yeah, like, uh, uh, commanding. I'm just looking big in. He's only 40 to now, man. I thought he was 40 when he joined us, man. He's done it. No, he, 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 he was, he was, he looked kind of ungainly, but he, he got the job done brilliantly and he, he was good for a few goals, wasn't he? Uh, listen, I, 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 I thought he was brilliant because the thing is, when Boom Song left, I'm thinking, my God, but you know, I, I thought it was if it was going to weaken us. Yeah. As much as, uh, John Allen was class, pace, a lot of composure and so forth. Big Kerry Akos was a pop, but he did a wee bit of everything as well, didn't he? He was kind of composed, he, he, you know, he's aggressive. Um, and, and, and when you look at him and Big Marvin at the back, they two were remarkable. He was more he, uh, he, he was more of an old school kind of centre half. Um, with, without a doubt, that's what I liked about him, Big. And he didn't, he, when you've got two centre halves that are willing to leather, the yeah. centre forwards, you know, I want to give them a wee bit. I think that kind of gets missing in the modern day game, where you know, yeah. you know, everything's the emphasis is playing out for the back. But these two guys had the, the fundamentals. Yeah. You know, they defended first and then worried about playing secondly. John Lane always looked for a for a more perfect central defence partnership where the other guy could read his mind. You know, as, as such, and look, John Lane, you you really do have to match runs at, at certain moments. You know, so yeah. Uh, he, he, you know, he preferred to hold the line, and you know, big, big Marvin playing beside him. Sometimes it was difficult for for them to get a, a real solid partnership and understanding. But um, Kiriakos, I think, made that wee difference. Aye. You mentioned Kiriakos. He's uh, goal scoring abilities there. Alec. He also got a couple in the uh, uh, league cup final against Motherwell. Um, Quite got a okay, fitting one to, to talk about, obviously, after the 25th anniversary of uh, uh, Coop's death of the other, that will uh, go down as the uh, David Cooper final. So what's your memories of, of that day? Quite an, uh, an emotional day for, for the Rangers support and also the, uh, the Motherwell support, but a big day for, for you and the squad to, uh, to go and get that first bit of silverware that season. Yeah, it was really important for me because um, having... I've been obviously had the, the disappointing season before we where we... we Put putting the semi-final penalties in one of the cups. Ne never took any silverware. So, I, you know, I, when, when you're at Rangers and the expectations are what they are, you know, you're almost like feeling embarrassed walking about. You know, what you're trying to sneak in the door at Ibrox so you're heating and saying, well, I've not won anything last year. So the, the punters are obviously not um, my best pals at the moment. And to get that one so early in that season... The first one, then it, it just made a hell of a difference to the confidence within the camp, within the Rangers supporters, um, and in the players in, gen in general. Just they, they played as if they, they could go through the rest of the season unbeaten. Obviously, there was a couple of wee stumbles to come, but um, they, I, I felt their confidence was at an all time high. Alex Ray, um, memories of that cup final? Um, listen, it, well, listen, I come on as I think I come on as a sub later on uh, in that game, Stephen. So um, I was grateful for the fact that we were coasting uh, the, when I come on because um, the one thing you want to do as a, as a player is you want to come on when you're you're well up, and I, and I think we were what, we three one up at the time, so three or four one up. So it made it relatively easy, and you just come on and coast through the game. Um, so and it was like. 
Um, to win a to win a cup final with Rangers, it's indescribable, really. Because as I said, I, I thought that had passed me by, um, well and truly. Uh, it, and I'll be honest with you, my fondest memory was the semi-final, Stephen, due to the fact Big Alec gave me the armband. So I led Rangers out to the seven-one demolition of uh, Dundee United. So that 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 was one. That was one that people often said to me, which was a highlight, and it was obviously amazing to win uh, that silverware with the club. But um, the semi-final for me was the one that was absolutely brilliant. But taking the gaffer's point on board because it gives you so much belief. When you've got that silverware, you're already ahead of the game. You know, you're looking, and, and it's hard to describe the actual pressure that it's put on all firm uh, players because if you get that, and the gaffers kind of just touched on it brilliantly there, you're tiptoeing about trying to go in the back door and all that because you feel as if you've let people down. It's a brilliant way of describing when things are not going particularly well because it doesn't half affect you. Um, and I'd played, I don't know, over 600 games in England. Uh, 500 games, 600 games in England. And you look at that and you don't ever get that kind of scrutiny. So to win that cup in the manner which we did, you know, we coasted. Effectively, the League Cup uh, was won after we'd beaten uh, Celtic in the quarterfinals because it just freed us up, gave us a good uh, kind of uh, uh, to, go and, to go and beat uh, Dundee United and then Motherwell. So it was brilliant. And just the actual celebrations, I think we went back to Ibrox afterwards. I think the only downside was a Big Tomo and um, who was it? Uh, the goalie, Big Waterhouse. Up, On the drums. Uh, oh, <laughs> Big Ronnie was playing the drums. Tomo was playing the guitar. And uh, honest to God, it was like the old... <laughs> it was horrendous. People were leaving in their droves. You were but, on the tambourine, Alec, like, weren't you? But I was going to say another instrument there, Gaffer, but I'm not sure we're allowed to say it in this day and age. Oh, you better, you better know. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I was just enjoying the... Um, because I, 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 did we not... I, I think it was a kind of subdued one, Gaffer. Did we not have a game... Uh, I'm trying to think. Did we know again? I, I I thought it was a quite a subdued night. I don't think people were. I think there was more focus on the, you know, right? Okay, let's just enjoy it. But it was low key. I thought it'd be a wee bit wilder than what it was because I think we were actually kind of focused on trying to kind of secure the title. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I didn't. I, I, honestly, you know, you listen to you back to the nine in the row days. People going missing for days. Not there was none of that carry on. I think it was an ad hoc kind of night, wasn't it? You know, just we just uh, kind of it wasn't really arranged, and we just uh, got got it done and said, like, let's go back and do something, and then it, it ended up quite sedate, didn't it? Really? Aye, no. Listen, you're absolutely right. But the thing is, I think there was a realization and a wee bit of relief as well in some ways, because as you say, you know, you're, you're just delighted to get it, and it and it just allows you to kind of uh, refocus and go again. Because whatever way, and you have to kind of pay, you know, it was, it was a strong Celtic team you were up against, and you knew that they were never going to down tools just because we'd won the League Cup. So it was a case of kind of just trying to kind of carry on in the form it had been, you know, it had been really impressive uh, after the slow start. So at that point, see, having won the League Cup, this is obviously, I'll bounce this to, to both of you. Um, we get beat at home to Dundee United and to Celtic, and with four games to go, we're high behind. And everybody says it's all over. There's a, a famous bed sheet at um, Ibrox um, from Celtic fans saying it's all over. How do you keep the dressing room going in them circumstances? How oh, you go, begging? <laughs> no, yeah, you, listen, see, Gaffer, I'm, I'm just going to interject here because I think it's yeah. important because we're amongst friends. Yes. I, it was uh, <clears throat> when you talk about losing to Celtic um, in the first game of the split. I don't mind saying this, by the way. I think be, you, you have to take this to the chin, Gaffer, because. Sometimes you you know you make decisions as managers and you left me out that day. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> that was the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, by the way, I was getting dogs abuse off a guy who, who was building an extension up by my Wayne's nursery gaffer and, and leading up to that old firm game. His geezer was giving me dogs abuse and I'm saying, I just wait until after Saturday, you're a big walloper. And then, <laughs> and, and then when I seen him on the Monday morning, I couldn't drive the car fast enough into the nursery. The guy was giving me dogs abuse. <laughs> yeah, but you, you carry on, Biggie. What was your take on after after that? Because it was at that point. I think the only guy I ever thought was Big Marvin, wasn't he? He he came out with a line. Keep believing. Keep believe, believe. Yeah. Um, no, listen. We you've still got hope, and I think we we always have in our minds that 
it hasn't finished yet. It never has finished. And again, I like I was on earlier and we we're speaking about like Ferguson and some yeah. of the, the little tips that, you know you take take from him going into management. And one of the things was never give up. And uh, I think we had that with the the Rangers team and and that Scottish Cup final. I described it when when Levin Grant scored the winner. Yeah, um, about us going right to the final last kick of the game. That was something that we kind of instilled into the, the squad. And as you said, those values of that, that we book that you got, the DVDs Absolutely. That, that we distributed, I think gave the guys an idea of what Rangers was, was all about and that you can never, ever go out on that pitch as a Rangers player and not have left everything on it, you know. And that, I think, was what pulled us through it. And in the end, you know, I, Marvin's belief as well, you know, he's never said I, but in saying that, I think we had a, a lot of character in the, that dressing room to come yeah. back. The Celtic still had to drop points, yeah, we get that, and it was in their hands, but we did the sufficient and the right um, victories came our way with the right performances in the end to do what we did on Helicopter Sunday. I think the big boost was, uh, I think, the Celtic lose, uh, I think they lost to Hibs on the Saturday. We, we, we were getting up in the bus, remember? Do you, That's right. Remember, getting up I in the bus. Well. And I, I hate the radio being on in the bus about, you know, deciding our fate. Um, but, so we, we started to play music, but some of the, the guys up the back, oh, it's Celtic, Celtic, they're doing the Hibs, you know, and they're, they're shouting. But up, up the front, I'm kind of saying, I don't want to hear this until... I hear something at the final whistle that's really good news for us. But at the same time, you know, I'm kind of listening in in the wee excerpts with the boys at the back. Well, it's Hibs have just taken the lead. And, of course, you just cannot evade it. You, you cannot escape it. And you, you, you've got to hang in there and see what happens with the final result. When we, we, we heard that Hibs had won, then we went to Aberdeen and Julie done the business and we... We were back on side. We were back on track again. Guys, I've got I've got to ask you, right? Full time, Hibs have just won three one. Was there a wee cheer on the bus? Come on, tell the truth. It wasn't a wee cheer. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. No, no, but I think I, I think it's, it's it's important, you know, because I always sat down the front of the bus as well. But the, as the gaffer says, it was filtered through, and it gave us a real opportunity and listen it's one of the things I never quite realised when I was doing South that the kind of rivalry between Aberdeen and Rangers it is fierce they they are always determined to turn us over uh, particularly in their home patch and to go up there that day I think that was raining as well Gaffer do you remember Big Daddo doing that celebration it was an absolute Rogmeyer wasn't it I mean, that's the, right the yeah. was terrible yeah. wasn't it you know and, yeah and, and I, but I, I think that I think that kind of characterises and epitomises what we actually uh, yeah. we were about that day because it was just a matter of rolling up the sleeves. Uh, oh, because right. they they, yeah. they had some decent big players, Russell Anderson, Xander Diamond, guys like that. Who were the, the boys? Scott Severin. You know, there, there, there were some decent players. I think big No Whelan might even have been up there at that time. So they were very much up a big physical team as well. Uh, so that gave us that belief, which was which was great because effectively then it was back down to two points, wasn't it? Yeah, that yeah that took it back to two. Sorry, Alec, just because when you're, when, you're, when you're heading to Easter Road on the final day of the season, or the league's, the league's up for grabs, you're, you've been through the final day uh, scenario before with the filming game that we spoke about in, in part one. What's the feeling on the bus heading to Easter Road? Do, do, do you all, as Big Marvin said, do, do you all believe or are you going there thinking, nah, this is probably not going to be your day, unfortunately? I, I, I think that um, I would say the general feeling in, in pe people's heads, you know, being Scottish, I, I, I don't care if you're Scottish or Spanish or Italian, whatever, I think you would still be thinking the same thing that Celtic would not fail. But the one thing that was overriding everything that we we emphasised to the players and, and Alec, I'll back this up, is, is, that, we, is that we said Whatever happens in, in this historic day, we cannot not lose this game. We've got to win this game. We've got to win the game to, to show that we went to the very end. If we draw this game, 
and Celtic drop points, then we'll live with the regret for the rest of our lives. I think that that that, that was the the key to not not Celtic losing the game, but to us winning. We we had to win. We the, just whatever happened, we had to win that game just for the sake of the pride of Rangers. Yeah, Jude Gaffer, you know, they, they, I often say this when I'm doing a wee bit, kind of talking to Faulkner after what, what was the, the, the Big Alex kind of message prior to the game. Do you know what? It was so simplistic, but it was so important. Um, because as you, you just said there, he says, listen, whatever you do, make sure you win this. I think your words were, if you don't, if the result goes your way, at Motherwell, and you don't get the results here today, Aye. Mm -hmm. you will, I will fucking haunt you for the rest of your life. Aye. I think that was the words that were ringing in my ear. It was almost a case of you'll never live it down if mm -hmm. you don't get the result here and the result goes the way you want it at, at Motherwell. So it was just a case of going out and trying. And, and Gaffer, you, you've obviously been, at, you had 700 and odd games for Aberdeen and uh, managed hundreds of games. Have you ever been involved in a game where the opposition didn't want to cross the halfway line? I was a, <laughs> not generally in, in my time, I've never to this day experienced it coaching, managing, playing where the opposition were very comfortable at one now and just sat in. I've never, I've never uh, experienced it. Yeah, I know, I know, and it, and it was even more, um, I think, emphasized when we got the goal because yeah. if, if Hibs had lost another goal, they would have missed out in Europe due to goal difference. That's right, yeah. So it, it became even more classical, if you remember, when when, I do. Uh, when we got the goal, we in actual got the goal and Buffon set him Straight up. off now to Kyriakos. Just step over there by uh, Buffon, who has to commit himself. He does well, gets it away from Brown, through to Purcell, a little touch by him. Buffon again, he's got Novo on the right-hand side, and comes back to Novo, drives it across, and Purcell in there at the near post, and Novo is absolutely delighted with himself. Uh, after that, it was just keep ball, and I was absolutely whoa, well. I don't want to say that word, but Marvin and Kenny <laughs> Akers, not the the two most beautiful players with the ball, were keep playing keep ball at the back. <laughs> and Marvin, Marvin, um, on occasion started to, to go over the halfway line, and then decided I'm going all the way now. You know, we've got the ball out wide, and I thought <laughs> Marvin, you. Get back as Kenny Akos is in his own half and Hibs, everybody in the Hibs team were back in their own box and they were just trying to protect that goal difference um, thing that would have prevented them getting in Europe. So that, that, that's what made it a bit farcical. But from the off, Alec, I mean, we, we, had, we were in Hibs uh, half yeah. the, whole, the whole game and, until uh, Nacho got that breakthrough. Gaffer, to, see when you're talking about, obviously we've, we've touched on about a lot of players who came to the club, and we've obviously we've obviously spoke about the guys who came in the summer. We mentioned Fergie, Kiriakos. We Buffo was integral as well, wasn't he? Because he brought he brought real quality middle to front. Yeah, um, he was so well out of the West, wasn't he? He was well out of the West, um, Thomas. You know, I coach, you and I coached him again yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, and we had a great season with Thomas. Then we realised, you know, how much more intelligent a player he'd become as well. But he, he was a willy the wisp, and he, he he got into little pockets, didn't he? And he, yeah. he was able to provide goals for us. Remember when he slipped um, Loving Trance through for the goal at Ibrox against uh, was it uh, Roma in, uh, Inter Milan? Yeah, Maybe. yeah, yeah. So we had moments like that, and. Um, Thomas gave us that kind of wee bit of quality in the last yeah. third, just with his little one-touch, two-touch football. Yeah, big, uh, big. In, do you know? You know when you're talking about uh, <clears throat> kind of is this game's wearing on? And big Marvin's doing Maisie runs, and you're just about to run on the pitch and hook him because he's got a bit, oh, a bit excited. <laughs> see, see, is that game's progressing? You, we, 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 everyone connected to football, particularly down south, when you're either going for a playoffs with Birmingham or I was at Wolves or Sunderland, and all of a sudden you hear for the behind the goal, it's like this, ah, and then you realise something's happened, but you're looking going, is, is it actually happened? What's happening? Because there, there's footage that does around, because clearly I was on the pitch, but there's, you, you're kind of looking at your bench, you're kind of going, right, what's happened there? And, and I think at that point, when, when it was coming through for the fans behind the goal, that the Motherwell had scored. Yeah. 
as soon as as soon as I as, as I heard the roar of the Rangers fans and probably well maybe I'm just exaggerating this so on, on the day it sounded like the biggest roar I've ever heard. Alec McLeish looking for a miracle here and he'll be thinking back to well a huge roar goes up in the stand the Rangers stand here and Motherwell we are told have scored. I got this tingle down my spine of which I've never experienced before in my life and I knew, obviously knew that, that Motherwell had scored um, and uh, the, you know from there on in it, it was obviously a bit nerve-wracking nerve waiting and, and uh, the, the two results coming in and then I heard another cheer and I thought right that must be the Celtic game finish now and they've drawn and, but then the news was that Scott McDonald has scored again and you know just to, to totally um, confound Celtic's uh, miserable day but we um, you know still had to go and do what we, we did uh, in terms of our approach to the game yeah. and see it out you know when when Marvin and uh, Kiriakos were playing at keep ball in the back <laughs> do, 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 I don't know if you remember if you've seen the footage Gaffer sees that second road goes in Barry Ferguson yeah. jumps on my shoulders and he's on the pitch, that's right, on the pitch. And he's went, we fucking won this. And I was like, and I remember pushing him because because Hibs had a throw in going up the line. And I'd, I'd, I'd visions a big fucking Marvin falling asleep or something because me and him were jumping about on the pitch as if we'd won it. So Aye. it was, uh, so Barry yeah. jumped on my shoulders at that point and said, well, they from won it and the game's still going on. But remember, there's one that Celtic uh, let slip, not once but twice. The referee, he looks at his watch there. Uh, McLeish is signalling here. Motherwell scored again. And McDonald again. It's Motherwell 2, Celtic 1. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. Look at the celebrations there. What a turnaround here this afternoon. You could never have imagined this. Rangers were happy just to keep possession, hoping for an equaliser. They haven't got one miracle, they've got two. And it looks as if Rangers are about to win. The most unlikely championship, and it's all over. And Alec McLeish is swamped by his backroom staff. Fans are going mad here. The stewards will do well to keep on that. And um, but you always have that. You always have that fear that you know something. Somebody slips. Somebody makes a mistake. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, listen. It was all a couple of minutes to go at that stage. But I think everybody in that the scenes at the death were just unbelievable. No, it, it was just uh, something that. that I hadn't really, I've never witnessed in my life before, you know, uh, that was just a unique one-off uh, in terms of the way that the whole game went and the way that the crowd reacted, the spine tingle that I got that probably yeah, that I'd never experienced in my life before and never have since. Um, and then to get the reward at the end of the season when the helicopter all of a sudden appeared above uh, Easter Road. I have to ask you at this point, it's something that um, everybody asked and it was when we were saying we were going to do this, it was ask the guys, what did that feeling feel like when that roar went up? Because I was I was actually, I didn't take a ticket that day. I'd been going religiously all season and I didn't take a ticket that day because I just, I started to get a stupid feeling that I was bad luck and uh, <laughs> I decided not to go and I went and watched it in the district um, with my brother and um, with, with my, my best mate and we were all season ticket holders and there was a guy in the corner of the district going absolutely mental and everybody was looking at him for a split second saying, what are you doing, mate? Like, what's what's the issue here? Because obviously it's 88 minutes and Big Marv and Kiriakos are just passing it back to each other. And then it dawned on us that, that, that Motherwell had equalised. Craigan's going to play this. It's a long one. Up there. Varga. Foreign shot. He's scored and he's scored! He's scored! McDonald's scored for Motherwell! Scott McDonald has scored! The Celtic players can't believe it! They're dead in their feet! One of them have scored! One one in for Park! The title will be heading to Easter Road to Rangers! The helicopter is changing direction! And the place was in eruption and we were all overjoyed and in that two minutes. Aye. I felt like my heart was coming out of my chest. How did you guys how how did you cope and, and, and what was it like and Talk us through the emotion of that. Alec, you go. 
first? Well, listen, as I said, when, when Barry jumped on my uh, shoulders, mm -hmm. he did, and I think the gaffer just mentioned that he, just, he started getting that kind of sensation that you are actually going to go on and win this league now. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, <clears throat> after the, the old firm game, I thought it would be nigh on impossible. You know, Big Marvin was kind of keep yeah. leaving. I thought it would be extremely difficult, but then there was a sense of belief the following week. So here we are, a couple of games down the line, and we're literally within... You have to put it in context, Stephen, because up until two minutes to go, you're not winning nothing. You've not won a sausage. You know, you, you, you know there's no roller. You're going through your, your routine. You, you know, you're good being professional, you're doing your bit, and then all of a sudden people are jumping on your back, you're looking over at the dugout, the gaffer's trying to kind of get information from, uh, from the bench to confirm that it's a goal, the Rangers fans are ecstatic, and then all of a sudden you're thinking to yourself, my God, at 34, 35, I'm going to win a league with Rangers, Aye. which is just, which is just, you think to yourself, what, what's that all about? And this all stems back, gaffer, to an interview I did with Tony Gubber, the January before, and when, they, when we'd packed up, we'd packed up all the camera work in my house in Wolverhampton, and he said to me, I meant to ask your passion. From that conversation with Tony Gubber, I said to him, I says, actually, I can't wait to go and watch Rangers in Europe, and also, I like a bit of golf. And he says, I'm meeting Alex McLeish tomorrow. So from that conversation, fast no, forward to the season later, and here I'm our one in the league. I thought that boat had totally sailed. So... I was, I was just, gonna, <laughs> and, and, and Gaffer, I don't mind telling people, this. I'm from the East End of Glasgow, so showing emotion is something that, you know, even, I hate, hate to say this, but even having my kids, there's no, no emotion, you know, you're, 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 you're brought up to be, oh, you're a man, don't show anybody your emotion. That's directly after that game finished and I broke down in tears. And, and it had never happened to me at any period, uh, and I was overcome with joy. Um, and I couldn't stop greeting for, even when we went back to Ibrox Gaffer, I was walking around the pitch and tears are running down my face. My so way. it had a profound, profound effect on me. Um, and it was just, in some ways, it was kind of the icing on a cake for me uh, as a kind of guy that had been all over England, all over the country. Started off at Rangers, come back home and won the league. So for me, it was just a kind of... Gaffer, Gaffer, you couldn't, see if you'd have said to me a year prior to joining Rangers. By the way, see in a year's time, we man, you'll be joining Rangers and in the last two minutes, you'll be one in the league with, with, with you know, Big Alec <laughs> and the boys. I had a hook chain says, you're talking pish, get out of my road. So, so... Thank God so I didn't get your heart line then. No, but that's what I'm saying, Big Game. You, you, it's like you said, you, you've just said there, it was a once in a lifetime, uh, you know, uh, that you'd actually felt that way on the back of winning a game and the manner and what it was. Uh, and I think that's it. And, and I think Stephen... Hits a nail on the head. If you say to anyone r related to Sunday, or even Celtic fans for that matter, you go, oh, helicopter Sunday, where were you? Now, Stephen's yeah, reminiscing about guys in the corner, you know, yeah. and, 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 and wee moments that within that whole day that people remember, because a lot of people had literally said, no, uh, I'm not taking tickets and things. And, the, uh, and because of the profound nature of it all, people actually remember to the minute where they were that day. And I think I find that remarkable that well, a game of football, people can be so specific because it means that much to them. Yeah, yeah. Z you're talking zero to hero, aren't you? And in, in terms of in the managerial role, uh, you, you know, Aye. you know, we were at Genk, you, you did your manager for a few times. The, the only thing that you wanted to do is to make your fans happy. And if the fans are happy, then you know that you're doing something right. And that, yeah. that, that, is my, that, that was always my ambition in every club that I managed or coach was to make the fans happy because you, you know you're, you're winning and you're, you're on the right track. Yeah. And that, that just, as, as I said to you, fairy tale stuff for you. Uh, for me, the, because of the margin and the expectations of clubs like Rangers, then if I'd lost that, it is zero, but you you won it. You're hero, and and it, the margin's very fine. It's, it's as they say, it's like that here. Um, that goes left to the zero, or it goes right to the hero, and you, you, you know that you just could not tip something like that to happen on that final day. Nobody, and I'm sure nobody would have. I'm sure a lot of Rangers fans would have put a bet on it for us to do it, and. Uh, 
you know, give, given the, the optimistic, everlasting support of the fans. But Gaffer, you know, you know, when you talk about all, you, I think one of the key things that's been people miss, you know, see the preparation and the organisation and the detail that goes into you. You, you say it started months before that season season even started. Yeah. You know, when you're recruiting, yes, you know, yes. Boomsaw, Prusso, and then you're looking at other things. So, so, in a lot of ways, people re think, oh, what a great season that was, but it's a lot longer than that season because you're actually building months and months in advance. And the details. Yeah, absolutely. Aye, aye, without doubt, big enough. Because that, we, I, I we think didn't do important. it the season before. We didn't do it the season before. As I said, we just uh, started to bring players in the summer, like three weeks before the season started, before we... We went to the the preseason training together, and then, you know, you're you're you you know the guys on paper. You've seen them before, you, you you know. But to try and get them to gel together and inside three weeks, and certainly for a lot of the guys who were at, towards the end of their careers, that, that was a very very difficult season for us. But the Dado one, the you coming, um, Boom Song coming, you know, then doing Kiriakos and Bergie in January, along with a couple of others. Yeah, yeah, before you know, it's, it's incredible, and it just taught me a huge lesson about recruitment. And it, listen, by that time, I'd already sussed it after the Mullerwell experience. But um, certainly, we we had a, we had a great little spell in gang. Not we weren't really able to bring any players in, but look what a lot of these players have done. Since, oh, kicked on. since that season, we had them. You know, <laughs> gang have made about a hundred million out of. Um, a lot of these young players that we introduced. <laughs> Biggie, do you know? Do you know? We've obviously touched. We've obviously touched on uh, everything about the season. You know, the, the the different stages, the different personnel, and things. One of the key things I, I felt at that point as well was uh, moving Fernando into the middle of the park, making him captain, and the whole bit as well, because he was frightening that year. He was yeah. uh, he was a yeah. driving force. Catalyst, yeah, he was. Aye, he was, he was, he was big in, he, even the, the constant in the training and things, he was a nightmare. He was always smashing people, he was driving, you know, and, and to give people a flavour of it, he was the one that even, he trained the way he played, he was always on the front foot. And I think his yeah. legs, he's, he's, and I think giving them that responsibility as well was... It was everything. great, because did you ever see Fernando on your puff before? Trying to separate people. <laughs> normally, <laughs> no, that was his captain duties. Normally, he was in there punching lumps at everybody else, you know. But he, he was he was actually playing the you know the, the peacekeeper, peacemaker, aye. <laughs> yeah. So uh, aye. brilliant. Yeah, great. Yeah. Listen, great. Aye, as you said, Fernando was was great for us in that that position. All the staff, I can't thank them enough. You know, Andy, Ian, and uh, Davy, Davy, and the two Davies. You know, the the masseurs. Big Doc, Big Doc, um, the Big Doc was, my goodness, was um, fantastic as well in terms of the, just, we, we, had, a, we had a brilliant um, rapport in the dressing room, you know, there was a great spirit, team spirit amongst not only our staff, but with the, the staff and the uh, Ibrox and all that as well. Big and you know, you know, um, uh, what we, we, we talk about supporters will be listening to this. And, this, and, and listen, I've been a supporter my whole days. And the one thing I'd, I've never, ever been privy to in terms of experience-wise, see when we went back to Ibrox, Biggie, and we, and we do the lap of honour and there's 40 odd thousand punters there. Aye. I was I was absolutely blown away. As I said, you know, I was Easter Road, I was greeting, coming back in the bus, I was greeting. And then as I was walking around the track, around the pitch, I was greeting, you know, I had a scarf wrapped around me, a, a flag wrapped around me. And I remember, I remember walking around, tears were dripping down my eyes, and I'm just thinking to myself, these people, these people have come out of their house just to watch <laughs> us walking around a pitch. I couldn't believe what I was watching, man. But I, it's not something I've experienced as a supporter. Yeah, that, that was making them happy. That's that was our goal, wasn't it? Making them happy. That's but 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 as you know, and I mentioned it in the last blog before you joined us with the guys, was that in many many occasions. When you don't win at Rangers, you're behind yeah. enemy lines in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, big, big, and it's like I say to you, man. If you wake up at one o'clock, you're tossing and turning, and before you know it, six o'clock in the morning, man, and your head's oh, you're busting your thing, right? <laughs> and and that is the pressure of playing for a club of that stature. You know the expectations. 
Um, you know, and it's difficult, and, and I suppose only the strongest survive in some yeah. respects because you know it's about, and it will always be about winning. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a unique, one of the unique clubs in the world that have to win every week. Absolutely. Can I just say something, guys? See on this, I've been a, a season ticket holder now, I think probably about 25 years, and Helicopter Sunday, when people ask me, you say, Stephen, right, okay, been going all these years, what's your, what's your highlights? And it's straight off the bat, it's Helicopter Sunday. That, if, if you could bottle that feeling for that two minutes, it would be, you know, People would would lap it up. It was incredible. I, I wish I wish I could. I could it was just up. incredible, wasn't it? It was unbelievable. And I thank you both because you gave us, as a support, um, me personally. I'm sure Chris, um, as a supporter as well. Everybody, that, that was unbelievable. It was just crazy. Um, it was just crazy moments. And a bit like you talk about thinking about you know Celtic Motherwell and drawn up until I went to Ibrox that night. Um, and, and saw you all walking around the pitch and everything. Well, I didn't really see you because it was a bit bloody by then. But um, <laughs> I, I, as I said, I was all day in the district. But I still thought it was a draw and, and things like that. It was just incredible. What a day. Genuinely, that, that is up there with the absolute pinnacle. Yeah, one of the best ever. You know, if not the best. Oh, no, listen, Moving on. Listen, no brainer for me, Stephen. That was, without doubt, that's the best. And you know, it was... It was I've got three kids and, and, and I won the league with Sunderland Gaffer so that, that goes to my eldest that, that medal the middle one will get the league cup and the wee man the last but not least he'll get the helicopter Sunday medal oh, how lucky is that wee <laughs> how lucky is the wee man he's going well to I'll be, I'll be worth more money <laughs> but guys so, moving moving on from helicopter Sunday 2005-2006 um, as we kind of wrap up your time Alex with us um, that would be your last in charge and it was difficult um, there were some runs in there with 10 games out of win exit in the cups and you know there was there was times where it had went full circle it had completely went full circle and you know it was the, the famous kind of David Murray saying no we're going to give him to the end of the season I've looked in his eyes and things like that but the real high um, and another achievement because you'd, you'd done the cups, you'd done the treble, you'd done the doubles, helicopter Sunday fifty, everything. But was Europe, and and you left us with the the last sixteen, and we had um, memory serves me right with Inter Milan, Porto, um, Bratislava. Is that right in that group? And then obviously we went on to play Villarreal and that. Just your memories, both of you, of, of that European run. And um, your kind of your last season, Gaffer. Gaffer, you may as well take over this segment because uh, I was seven or five match ban for an accident in Moscow. Oh yeah, that's right. Aye. So when you fell over, over, Alex, that's right, wasn't it? You fell over. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> carry on, Gaffer. Aye, uh, okay. Well, um, no, it was it was a, a tough season. We we did um, encounter a, a few injuries. I think was that the season Hearts made a, an incredible start to the season. Yep. Yeah, ten games in a row or something, and um, you, we we just you know it was we couldn't get to the levels or the standards of the, the previous season. There was there was injuries, there was um, mitigation for that, but you know I'm not going to. Um, talk to the guys in the blog and say that um, ah, it was because of this, because of that. That is what it is. And uh, we got to a certain part of the season. See, see the way I, I approached that season, given that, that we did have D Dado missing for a, a period of yeah. time, other people missing, we, we, um, we always, because it was a Scottish league, I always felt that we're Rangers, we have to try and win every game, we have to go at teams, and you, even when I knew we were a, a wee bit weaker than, than we were the previous season. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we were losing at places like Hibs and, uh, and Hearts, and, and uh, I thought, God, what, what do I do? Do I go and shut up shop, do, make tactical, you know, play Rangers defending and hit them in a the break, and you know, and play that way a little bit in, in a sense of way that Stephen is is adapted to Rangers this season. Um, he's he's been he's expected to go and win all the games, but you've seen him in Europe when they've played the, the more of a defensive line and counter. Then they've been very effective. But you know, it kind of um, 
I, I was able to use that tactic in the Champions League, and and uh, we were, you know we were able to go to places like Inter. Okay, it was a closed door. We we lost the game, but we we got valuable points because of that those kind of tactics. And uh, obviously, the one in Porto was significant. Um, I think a few people thought I was going to go after that game. And, and uh, you know, after that, the second half of the season, we got players back and we had, we had an incredible return of points. If we had the same amount of points in the second half of the season, uh, if we'd have got the same amount of points in the first half of the season as we did in the second, we would have probably been competing with Celtic for the title. Um, but anyway, it, it happened the way it did. I, I, I did say to David in January that <clears throat> it might be better if, if I, I leave now, we're in the quarters. And he says, no, no. He said, look, he's been a great servant. Go at the end of the season. Uh, I don't want to see anybody else taking the team out uh, in that um, game against Villarreal other than you. Uh, so, you know, I, I, uh, that was a good gesture. Um, but I knew I was leaving Rangers at the end of the season, which was, um, you know, I had to face it, you know, it wasn't in my control. Um, I was, was a little bit uh, heartbroken about it, but at the same time, I still had work to do between then and the end of the season. And, um, you know, so we went right through to the end of the season in, in a kind of decent unbeaten run and and uh, then uh, only losing narrowly out to Villarreal. Yeah, Gaffer, do you know uh, the, one of the one of the ones that I remember as well because the, the only game that I played in that campaign was against uh, over in Porto, and uh, what a what a feeling it was. You know, you're standing there in that Champions League music, and that was one of the things I'd said to Tony Gobert uh, prior. That I'm going to go and watch Rangers playing in the Champions League because I've not seen Aye. it because playing my whole career. And here I was that stood, in, and and if my memory serves me right, that Porto team spent a fortune. A fortune because they, you know, Deco and all these guys had all left yes. uh, to, to follow Jose Mourinho to to England, and they brought mm -hmm. in a load of young Brazilian players, and I think you brought on young Ross McCormack. Yeah, who, we who, who, Ross, yeah. Ross, Ross will get the equaliser, mm -hmm. and then we were so unlucky. And I, and you you won't say this, but partly the problem in that second season is we actually lost a lot of good players. We'd lost no, we lost Yeah really, really talented individuals. And uh, it's like you said, and, and I think over the course, uh, and I'm not talking about as a fan here, over the course of your tenure, when I look from a distance, Celtic were spending big at that time and you were constantly kind of nipping and tucking the whole while. Uh, hence, mm -hmm. hence the reason, even if you go back to 2004-05 season, I, I think you spent 1.4 million quid to mm -hmm. compete, to compete with you know, and, you, and it's well documented how much Celtic were spending at, the, at that time. You know, when they had Hartson, and Sutton, Petrov, Lennon, you know, all the Alan Thompson, all these guys. So, he kind of did what he did, what he did and to get to the last sixteen, because people, you know, people would look back at us and go, "What a remarkable achievement!" Because if you remember the Villarreal game, big boy day had an unbelievable chance over yeah. in, over in Spain. To, to, right. to take us through the last eight, and, and when you consider, you know, the, the as you said, because at that point, Gaffer, we were in good form. I think yeah. from February, February through to the death in yeah. May, we never we lost it. Never lost a game. We never lost. I know. I That's know. right. So if we could get through there, you never know because the actual brand and the style we were playing was it was just kind of very compact. Plenty of we, had, good just, yeah, we lost a lot of players, but we, we, we had a, a few injuries as well, didn't we? And um, Dado, yeah. Dado was the key one for me. He I he think. was pivotal to everything we were doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, when you lose key players like that, you, and you, know, you, you, you might say that you can't lose one player and that's the end of it. Yeah, but one player can make such a big difference. You know, you, if, you, if you take back to... Spurs when they sell Gareth Bale and then bring in like six players for the money that they go for, right. Gareth, they think, well, look when we got back, you know. But takes these these guys. Some of them didn't didn't pass muster, but at this, and, and one or two of the others took ages to settle in. But when you've got a match winner like Gareth Bale or Dado Precio, then uh, it makes such a big difference. But but as I said, we we played more tactically in the Champions League. We got those results where. 
you know, some kids playing and uh, players who, who weren't really playing regularly, so didn't have much rhythm. And, and tactically, we got through by, by adopting a different style in terms of what we, the way we played in the Premier League. But as Alec rightly says, second half of the season, we, we, yeah. had, we had a tremendous unbeaten run. I would, anyway, just, uh, I would just. Um, anyway, that, that, that ended in, ended in a. In a you, you still look for positives out of a sad situation. I would just ask you guys, just as we. Before kind of Chris is going to ask you about Genk and things like that and working together, but I was just going to ask you, just before we, we kind of wrap up your time, Alex, an impossible question almost. Um, Alex, we ask you as well. Um, your time at Rangers, give us your one outstanding moment. Go on, Biggie. Go on, Gaffer. I, I, my my um, one outstanding moment is it's got to be the helicopter Sunday day because um, the, the 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 treble was wonderful, um, but I had an incredible array of of um, world class players in that team, and I'm not not saying that, that I don't. Um, rate my my players in helicopter Sunday world class, but you know if you think of the difference between the, the the teams, the players, and for the guys to have done it on that final day, and I think only for the the massive spine tingle that I've never experienced before in my life, then that's the one. Ah, right, listen, it's, it's it's very difficult to over. Uh, oversee Helicopter Sunday in terms of achievements and things and, and we've obviously spent about an hour or so talking about Helicopter Sunday but it's on a personal point of view and I touched on it earlier on to Captain Rangers at Hamden to walk out in front of a little predominantly Rangers uh, following I think they had the lion's share of the crowd that day so to captain the team it was was just it's not, it's not often you get that opportunity to do that. So from a personal point of view, the standout bit was actually kind of marching the team out at Hamden for me. That was that was just absolutely amazing. It was just a great feeling. The the helicopter Sunday one was was the most the most emotional one. And um, from technical point point of view, the um, the Mikel's Arteta's penalty that sealed the treble was was probably the greatest achievement. <laughs> Gaffer, just quickly on the back of that, you know, you, you know, you, uh, we have off the Stevens just told us. Stevens just told us there that um, about he was in he the was district park helicopter Sunday and yeah, so forth, right? Yeah. Now, uh-huh. going back to the Arteta penalty, yeah. it's funny because I know exactly where I was that day. Yeah, I, was, I was sharing a room with Mo Kamara, who ended up going to play with Celtic, who knew nothing about Scottish football. Uh, French speaking boy and uh, I remember uh, I remember every 10 minutes I'm phoning my dad back in Glasgow what's happening what's this going he's going see Alex says, Rangers this and I'm going oh, this, is, this is too much and I'm walking about the room with the phone every 10 minutes and my, my boxer shorts <laughs> and, and Mo, Mo Kamara is going Alex you fucking crazy <laughs> right <laughs> so anyway for the last 15 minutes I phone my dad and says put the phone to the tranny and I'm pacing up and doing I'm sweating and the whole bit and then obviously Rangers won right and that Mo Kamara shaking his head at me as if to say you're a fucking loony what is it you're <laughs> actually doing right and then he came to Celtic in my second season I think and I remember meeting up with him and I, and I, I, I remember the story that I've just told you about I said do you remember I was telling you I was walking up and doing I said do you get it now and he went oh Alex you're not crazy the Scottish are crazy <laughs> so, so that was where I was in that day in a hotel room when Arteta scored that penalty uh, with yeah. Clement Wolves. So yeah. it's, it just shows you it, it impacts everybody that supports the club. Just a quick one from me, guys. Stevie obviously mentioned there about the two of you working t- uh, together over in Belgium. Uh, Alec, you had was a bit of success with uh, Birmingham uh, down south. No, had a, had a few other uh, jobs around about the whole world as well. But why did you ask Alec Ray to go with you? Uh, to Genk and what was it about the opportunity that really appealed for you? Yeah, well, Belgium was back in the day when uh, I was younger manager. Belgium was one of my um, scouting countries because I always felt you get really good value for money 
and and the players there, you know, they 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 brought a lot of players from Africa. Okay, there is the the rules in terms of, um, you you know the when you're buying players from the African continent, and the Belgium seem to be able to get access to them all the time, and uh, you, you know due to their their roots with uh, Africa, and not only African players, but the Belgians in general had tremendous quality of player and uh, 14 years or something I've been going in and out to Belgium so anyway you know I got this call from uh, an agent saying um, would I talk to Genk I've just sacked the manager after five games Um, is there any chance I could meet them somewhere and I think we met just outside Brussels and I, I wasn't I wasn't coaching at the time I said yeah definitely take the the opportunity to speak to you. Um, he told me right away there wasn't any money to spend, but if, if um, we sold somebody, then perhaps we could use that money. He said they're in a transitional period of finance, um, but they, they liked my record and what I'd done with clubs that you know maybe had financial problems. <laughs> I don't know if they, they, they should just nick nicknamed me the accountant but anyway um, I thought hey I'm going to take this challenge I asked them for 24 hours but you know they, they really nailed me to the the post and said look we really want to know right now you know don't wait 24 hours said don't I need to speak to my wife no no just come on just there was a decision I like I said ah right okay I'm taking it and then um, you know I I've been talking to Alec yeah, quite a lot in, in recent times, months, just months before up to that. And I thought, right, Alec, what, I've looked at Alec's career and as a coach and his motivational skills and, and the, the way that he gets on with players. And I um, asked Alec if he fancied that and he jumped at it. So we went on that adventure and um, we, you know, we were trying hell of a hard to get Genk to the, to the top of the league or towards the top and uh, we introduced a lot of kids we went to the academy games we we brought some kids into the training with us and and, uh, and in the end we, we just stayed for one season but we had a tremendous time there and I've got to say you know the, the, the guys that have come through and going to play in other clubs ever since and we, we're really proud of that because um, you know, Timothy Castagna, a boy who's playing at Atalanta, he, he, Genk sold him, I think, for 10 million euros. Um, Wilfred Ndidi, who was our only signing of the whole season, um, we we got him. You know, I'm, I can't say that I, it was me and Alec that uh, scouted him we, because we had a great chief scout who gave me the name and I put it to the board and told them that they were going to lose him if they didn't didn't sign him and pay the hundred thousand euros to get him. I think Leicester paid fifteen million for him. So uh, you know, I, I really um, begging really you enjoyed. forgot you begging you forgot Sergey. He he's uh, he was a real no, deal. I, that's right, you know. But listen, there's about another ten players that I can mention: Sergey Milinkovic Savic, who plays for Lazio. Sergio went for ten million as well this season yeah. after we left. We we introduced him into the team. And now English teams are talking about 100 million for him, and a Serbian kid, and mm. he, was, he was a brilliant lad. He, in in terms of the the teaching side of things, he was a willing listener. Um, so there was loads of guys, Alec. You know, you remember the kids went to Anderlecht, and you know, and P- P- Peter Gherkins, Schreiber yeah. as well went moved yeah, on. Steve, Steve Schreiber went to Bruges. Steve Schreiber went to Bruges, um, yeah. and. We had a brilliant time there, Alec, didn't we? I'd listen, and, I, 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 I was, was just... disappointed that, with the, the, you know, they, they didn't. They just, we just went for a year. We, we, the contract was up, and that was it. We never we really negotiated with them again to uh, prolong the contract, which um, I think we we should have been entitled to, given the amount of kids that we brought through and, and got them to a reasonable position. Yeah, listen, it was a great experience. It was just really good. It was just good to see other people. We, we also worked with a guy called uh, Hans Visser, 
who was a, a, a Dutch fella. Uh, his coaching methods were brilliant, but I just think the whole dynamic, the club was excellent. Um, they were very professional, very well-run club as well. And uh, as you say, Gaffer, I think the influx of kids that come through was 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 absolutely great. It's, it's actually good to actually see them kind of really kicking on with their career because, as you said, Big Milinkovic over at Lazio's turn it up. Isiba uh, is at Thingme. Um, Bruges. Bruges. And then you've got Peter Gerkins as at uh, Anderlecht. Anderlecht yeah. So, you know, they're all they're all, still, all the ones that we spent and invested time with every afternoon yeah. have all kicked on. But listen, we, we can't kind of take the whole credit. We were just kind of a part of that journey as well for these kids because the, the one thing that the, they had at Genk, the, the youth set up, the way they went about their business, the way they introduced kids into the system as well. Yeah. Uh, it was just a brilliant club. Uh, unfortunately, only had one restaurant that I could tolerate. Big, and I was in there every night for the same pasta every night with my training gear on, and then straight up to the room. But as it much as Mill the isolation, Freet, was it Mill, Mill Freet? Oh, Mill, Mills in front. Aye, that was it. Aye, but it was it was just a great experience, and it was good to see a different side because because of the amount of time we had, the way that the weekends were structured, the games on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It allowed you to get to lots of games as well, and uh, it allowed you to get to, to lots of games um, throughout the course of the weekend. So it kept me busy. Um, but it was again, as I said, it was just a, a terrific experience. And, and I have to be honest with you, seeing the actual and, and Chris, Chris has asked the, the questions, seeing the detail, and this is just because the gaffers here, the detail in which we 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 actually used to watch three games in the lead up to the opposition. Uh, so it gave me an insight of the actual detail and how much preparation you had to put in and the work ethic that, that you did, Gaffer, because we used to get into the back at 7 in the morning and be there at 6 and 7 at night. And, yeah. that's the reason, and that's the reason why I used to go for my dinner with my, with my training gear on because I still had the same gear on as we'd been in there all day looking at analysis and trying to pinpoint how Hans was going to put the, the training on. It was, it was just a great experience, I have to say. I remember Michel, the... the Trainer of the the kids as well. You yeah, skills. yeah. He he was he was amazing. Michel, was it Ribery? Ribery? Ribero, hi. Ribero, Ribero, yes, yes. Well, he's actually, Ribero. Uh, Gaffer, I don't know if you know, but he's actually out in. And I'm di digressing, but he's actually he was out in America working in the MLS for a while. That's right. That's right. He asked me about Rangers, and I I, I did put his name in, but um, I don't think anything happened. And uh, that was, you know, I'd asked him if he'd received anything back and he said he never heard anything, which is disappointing, but um, he's a terrific youth coach. Yeah. Now, but the whole experience was great. When it, and it gives you, because uh, uh, did we have something like 16 or 17 different nationalities? We had Georgians, we had also Serbians, we had Africans, you know, French, yeah. um, Belgium. We just do so many different variations of nationalities. That, that's what I found intriguing about the whole thing because there were so many different cultures within that dressing room and, and then you have to pull it all together. Um, yeah. but it was a great experience. Absolutely brilliant. Just just the final one from me, I like if we, if we touch on your, uh, your uh, it's kind of two things in the, in the one question, if you touch on your uh, Scotland experience or it's the first first time around, certainly better than the uh, the second time around, but how, how would you reflect on I think, the privilege of managing your country and what you managed to achieve over your over your two spells there? Yeah, um, okay, the second one was, was quite difficult. First time around, we, you know, we failed with the skin of our teeth. And, um, you know, the, the second one, just you probably never felt as um, maybe strong as, as I was in the first uh, time around. But in saying that, you know, at the end of the day, we, we do get a crack at the playoffs, um, which I, I felt, I really felt that I had to experiment in that whole year, almost like sacrif sacrificial a wee bit in a, in a way that uh, to, to use as many players as I did and look at as many players as I could and ju just to see if we can get some kind of, um, you know, uh, rhythm going forward and uh, Qualifying to the playoffs with it, with much more or less the strongest team that I had, and able to play two strong teams and um, twice in a row for once in in my whole year and a bit there, then uh, that that shows you that that made the difference. But at the end of the day, um, if you're talking about uh, you know statistics and all that, which people love nowadays, 
the the competitive games that that I, I was involved in, it was a sixty six percent win ratio. So, you know, in the end, I'm I'm not saying it was my my the greatest work I've ever done as a manager or a coach, but um, I certainly felt that I had to make those those experiments, use a lot of the kids, check them all out. And, and I'm not taking any credit for saying that I brought this guy through or I brought that guy through. I merely um, gave them a showcase to get them to improve mentally and physically and, and uh, technically as well. Gentlemen, that um, wraps up part two of the Alex McLeish story. Um, it's been a real privilege um, speaking to you. So it's a huge thanks to um, regular co-host Mr Chris Jack for joining us Chris thanks very much thanks no Chris problem. no problem at all it's been great to chat to you guys really enjoyed it great stuff great. Nah, until, the, until the next time big man the next <laughs> listen time. guys stay safe stay safe yes um, a very important message at, at this point um, but everybody to stay safe out there but before we go massive thank you to Alex Ray a double winner at Rangers and still one of the ones in the who works in the media that we can count on and trust and a good voice for all Rangers fans here. Alex Ray, thanks for joining us. Ah, it's a pleasure, Stephen. Good to speak to you all, guys. I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee now. <laughs> Cheers, Al. Take care, chaps. Thanks, Cheers, Stephen. Alex. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Alex McLeish, thanks for joining us. Um, a huge privilege to have you on the show. Thanks very much, Stephen. Great. Enjoyed it and I'm very proud to have been on it. So that is the end of the Alex McLeish story, Alex McLeish podcast. It's a massive thank you to our guests for joining us. Um, Alex Ray, Chris Jack and Alex McLeish have all been fantastic. Important message at the moment, obviously, to everyone is to stay safe and stay indoors. But we hope that these podcasts will help uh, and give you an hour or two of listening to enjoy. Um, it's a huge thanks to Jersnet for hosting and it's a massive thanks to our sponsors, um, Kerry's Crazy Costumes and the Kitchen Custom Factory. You can find all their details on our website, for Lads Have a Dream. Um, and for now, please stay safe and take care. Ignore the nonsense, the relevant and the noise. Celtic need to get the ball forward. Sutton is up there. McDonald's got a chance one on one. McDonald, Britain's inside the box with him. Can he finish Celtic off? McDonald, he scored again. It's all over.